Okay, Tov. Today's stop is stop Pei Gimel in Baba Basra. So we for a chenokal basis for Anusun Matsar Bashivya. We're at the halfway point on Pei Gimel Manafa. We left off yesterday. What was our discussion? We've learned that if you bought three trees in somebody's land, everybody agrees, not only Rav Kiva and Rav Meir, but say even two trees, but even though everybody agrees, if you buy three trees, you're entitled to the land between them. What does between them mean? Underneath the tree, between the trees, and as far as the outer tree grows, around around the tree in order to be able to service the tree, right? As, as much as the uh, gatherer and his basket uh, take up. That's what we saw yesterday, right? Now, question is, how far apart are these trees? We said yesterday, how far? If they're six miles apart, what are you going to get all the land in between them? That's crazy, right? So we said, well, one sheet is it's between four and eight amas. Another sheet was between eight and 16. Four to eight, not including eight. Four to points to 7.9999. And the other sheet was from eight until 15.9999. Let's call it eight to 16. That was the machlokas we had yesterday. And we saw different views. And we said, okay. The four to eight, we see a source for the four to eight. Uh, one place it says, you know, four amos is between. Another one says uh, up until eight amos. Uh, if you if you plant a kerim, you know, if you have a kerim, you're not allowed to plant any regular seeds or any grain in the in the kerim in a in a vineyard. Okay, how far away do you have to be? It says eight. If it's if it's uh, if you have a distance of eight amos between uh, between you know between let's say run row and the next, then you could plant grain there too. Okay, you could plant grain as long as you're eight amos away, uh, uh, eight amos away. In other words, it's a separate carob. If you have one one row here and one row here and one row here, you can plant. Uh, you can plant as long as nothing overlaps. You can plant the grain there. So we saw four to eight. Then we saw a proof of sixteen. The first proof we says if you plant the carob and there's sixteen amos between them, then you could plant grain in between as long as there's always at least sixteen amos there. Not nothing less. If it's fifteen point nine nine, no good because that's connected, so to speak, to the carob. If it's sixteen amos away, it's okay. But how do we know that the one who holds sixteen is the max maximum? How do we know his minimum is eight? So Mari didn't have any proof of that. Glass as well, since the one who holds between four and eight, four is half of eight. So presumably, the one who holds at the maximum of sixteen, his minimum is probably half of that, which is eight, which is a little bit of a weak answer. So the Gemara now says, Amarava, smack in the middle of the page, Amarava. We're going to take the minimum of one and the maximum of another. What is the distance between the trees that you acquire the land if you bought three trees? Four to 16. Minimum of four, maximum. Well, you say, you, and we say yesterday, well, if, if, it's, if it's four amas between them, certainly if it's closer, if it's three or two, certainly no, that's not a field. Because if they're closer than four amas, that's what's called a forest, which is homemade to take apart. Same thing with vineyards. It has to have a certain distance between them other side of vineyard. In the rural vineyard, we'll see the, 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 the dominant sheet is you have to have like five vines, two and two, and then one in the, one in like at a tail. And then it's considered a vineyard. Then there's rules about how far you have to be away from the grains. If it's not a vineyard, you only have a single vine you can't plant. Let's say within six bachem or sheet, there's three bachem, different sheet this, but it's a real problem today. Some people have grapes growing in their yard and they have grain there too or something. You can plant, plant anything right near it. If it's right near it. Okay, um, fine. So we saw, so, so but Rabbi says that Allah is a minimum for maximum 16. And I, what about this business? In other words, he's taking the minimum of one, maximum of another. What about the idea that the one who holds maximum is eight? He holds, uh, no, it's not like either one. It's not like the four to eight. It's not like the eight to 16. It's four to 16. Because he's taking the minimum of one and the maximum of another, right? Um, now, uh, why why is that? Why is that? So the Gemara is going to say Rosh Ram explains it more. But let's see the price. The price is tiny to us. The rubber, how close? What's the close, minimum amount that they have to be apart? Four arms. Arms. What's the maximum amount? Shisha shisha three. konaka. If you bought three trees and they were distant from one another between four and sixteen amos. Then how raise the you get the kark in between the Silonus, any other trees that might be any smaller trees or any other trees that might be in there, any trees. So let's say you bought these three trees, but there's some other trees within that. Let's call it that triangle of three trees. All right, the fichach, so you get the karka, any any, any trees that are in between. The fichach, therefore, Yavash, and let's say the tree dried up, died, Osh or it was cut down. You're still entitled to the karka. You own that land. That's the idea that if you bought three trees, you own the land. Yeshlo karka, you have the karka. Let's say it's less than four amas between them. Oh, yes, or more than 16. 
Oh, so you didn't buy them all together. You bought a tree here, you bought another tree there, you bought another tree there. I raise a low, even from the same seller, I raise a low corner, then you didn't acquire low as a car, you didn't get the car, so it's not the trees, not the trees among them. And therefore, if you don't have the karka, which we could govish only if the tree dried up or died, whatever, or nixes were cut down, a low karka, you don't have any karka. That's the rule. Rashbam says, Rashbam says over here, um, same thing with yours, but Rashbam a little bit above says, Bata Sam's Kuup did it salmon, but Kulu Krabon and Kapasa. We all like Rabban and the sphere learn, but my deplete, please, my love, please. In other words, says, I didn't we say, are, aren't we going like a mixture of one? You know, usually if you're Paskin, the Reuben and Shiv, uh, you have two rabbis, Rabbi one and Rabbi two are arguing. So you're Paskin like what? Now you're taking a combination? Not really. Not really. Because the truth is that where do they argue about? We know they argue about the maximum. Is it eight or is it six? Is 16, right? What about the minimum? Well, we saw four. We don't really know that the one who holds maximum of 16, his minimum is eight. We just surmised it. We said, what's his minimum? Well, since four to eight is half of, since four is half of eight, probably he holds half of 16 is the minimum of eight, but we didn't really see that. So Rajbam explains. And we all like the story of someone that the maximum is 16. Uh, with this really, but my, what they argue, they argue about. My local, but we know they argue about the maximums at eight or sixteen. That's a machlokus. But about the minimum, we don't know for fair. We just assumed it, right? Because I'm saying, to Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon, I'm saying, 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 I'm so basically, he's saying we're really going like Rabbanan, that holds the maximum of 16. But who says that the minimum is eight just because the maximum is 16? Maybe the minimum is four, just like the other one. Maybe they maybe they agree about that. That's why when he, the psak is like the Rabbanan, maximum is 16. What's the minimum? We don't find any machokis about that. We're going to assume we only see that one place is four, and therefore we assume the minimum is four, maximum is 16. Now, you might ask, we discussed this, I think, I think about this yesterday, the three trees. What is their formation? You say you own them. We're going to talk about that. All these questions come up. Now, uh, Omele, Rob, we're back in the Gemara, about 10 lines from the bottom of the page of the Gemara. Omele, Rav Kavim, Ebsil, Ravashi. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I pop there. I skipped. That's already the answer. I skipped the question. Boy, Rav Yirmi, about 12 lines from the bottom of the page. Boy, Rav Yirmi. Shumode, Mokam, Kotsar, Mokam, Mokam, Rahmat. Rashman brings out a different shot, but he likes this shot. Meaning this. You're measuring here. You're saying these trees have to be Minimum of four amas from one another, minimum, maximum of 16. How do you measure? Where do you measure from the tree? But certainly, we're not measuring from the branches that stick out and have an apple hanging here or there. Talking from the trunk of the tree. Trunks of the trees are usually narrow, uh, wider at the bottom, narrow at the top. Where do you measure from? Do you measure from the bottom or from the top? If you measure from the bottom, your area is smaller, right? Because you're looking from the, if measuring from the top, the area is more, right? So which one do you do? So he brings a proof from a, from a Mishnayis and Klein, Tashma. It's not. Arakuba Shabagefen. Arkuba is a knee. It's like Arkuba. Ain't a moted element, Iker Hashem. Now, what is this? It's hard to understand these. Therefore, I brought a illustration. <laughs> the great uh, art scroll Mishnayis, the Hebrew ones, called, they call it the Reisman, has a very good picture here. I'm going to show you this picture. I don't know if you can see it in, in the, uh, on the screen. But basically, it says sometimes you have a vine which grows up, and then it's it turns. It's like a uh, it's like a an upside down bent knee. So it comes out of the ground here, and then it goes along the ground outside, and then it straightens up again. That's called a rakub. It's like a knee, a bent knee. And where do you measure from? Now here, the issue in climb is how close can you plant a grain? Let's say even an individual vine, not even a kerim. An individual vine, you can't plant a grain within six tvachim, six fist widths from there. So where do you measure from? Do you measure this one vine? It's bent, and it's bent here coming out of the ground. See, the, under, uh, the part that's under the ground is the gray area. The dark area is above ground. But it comes out, then it goes, and then it goes up here. Where do you measure from? You measure from Ha'ikar Hasheni. That's called the second root. It's not really the root. It's really outside. But he calls that the Ikar Hasheni, from the second one, from the middle one. So he wants to prove from there, Tashma, where do you measure from? We're talking, our question is about a tree. Do you measure from the bottom of the of the trunk where it's wider or narrower on top. So he says the proof is the ton our kuba should be geffen enamoted elame ikarashani from the middle one, meaning as it grows up, meaning from the second root, meaning 
as it grows up. You don't measure from the bottom, you measure, you don't measure from the top nor from the bottom, but from the middle. Trying to Shani is an indication that means you measure from the middle, not from the top. And that's what he says over here too. You measure from the middle of the trunk. Okay, another question. Boy, you're here, yeah. We have asked another question. Now, yesterday we saw. I'm not. I'm not putting this away because we're going to need another another diagram in a minute from the next mission in Klein. Yesterday we saw. Remember, um, the question was raised um, that we said we said you can cut down from the geza, right? Let's say anything that came out of the trunk. And you bought one tree, let's say one or two trees. Mine's rough on it. And what, what do you entail? Anything grows out of the trunk of the tree belongs to the buyer. Anything grows out of the roots belongs to the owner because he didn't sell them. He didn't sell them the ground. Anything that came out of, the, out of the ground belongs to the seller because he only bought one or two trees. Okay. So the Gemara asked Akashi yesterday, okay, why aren't you concerned that maybe the buyer bought one tree, one tree. Then what happened was things grew out of the ground but there was a lot of earth covered it up. There was like a mudslide or something, or you know, uh, <clears throat> the ground uh, grew. There, more earth gathered up there, and now it looks like three trees. Why do you say three trees? So why do you say uh, it's it's a difficult thing? You say if it grows out of the out of the trunk, the buyer's entitled to it. Yeah, but aren't you concerned that that's going to look like he bought three trees? He's going to say later on he really only bought one tree. Later on, stuff grew out of the ground. And the, it can cover it up, and it looks like, or you know, saying, or it looks like he bought, or even even if it didn't grow out of the ground, it grew out of the trunk. I'm saying it wrong. <clears throat> he bought one tree. Two branches came out of the trunk, low down on the ground. Then earth covered it all up, and it looks like he bought three trees. So why aren't you concerned about that? So he says, no, you're not allowed. He's not allowed to keep it. If it grows out of the trunk, he's got to cut it down. The, the the buyer is allowed to cut it down for firewood if it grew out of the trunk because it's his. It's his tree. He bought the tree. He doesn't own the ground. He owns the tree. So if, if branches grew out of the trunk, he can cut those branches out and keep the wood. <clears throat> if it grew out of the ground, then it goes to the seller. But the question is, if it, it, why, why can he cut it down? Because if he maintains it, you're afraid that maybe the earth will cover it up and it'll look like three trees. Therefore, he's not entitled to maintain it. If, it, if the branches grew out, he's allowed to cut it down. That's the rule that we said yesterday. That's when he bought one tree. And then branches grew out, and you're concerned he's going to cheat and say, I bought three trees, right? Because look at it now. There's three trees here. Okay. What happens if though the seller sold it to him that way already? What happens if he sold it to him that way? Says the says the boy Yirmiya, eight lines from the bottom. He sold him three branches. Three branches. Now, three branches, and the branches look like three trees, right? Machalo. Machalo, again, machalo shosha bade ila now. What do you say there? Is it like, is he selling like three trees? Raj Baum says uh, in the second of the wide lines, in the, the widest lines, ila nechad machalo. He sold them one, sheish lo shosha bade, muhachem zemiseh. He sold him one tree, but it has, that one tree has branches that stick out a far distance from one another. And is it like three trees? It's like three trees there. Daladamas, we said, what's the distance that they have to be that you acquire the land? Three, four to 16, between four and 16 amas. So let's say he told him one tree, but the one tree has two branches that stick out and they come out and they stick out and they're over four amas away. Can he say, I bought three trees here? It's like three trees. Look how big it is. They, is it like three trees? I'm a, so he asked him, what do you say over there? The, right now, the ground covered it all up and it looks like he sold him three. Do you look at the goof? Do you look at the tree that he sold him as only one, and he doesn't have any karka because he only bought one tree? Or do you say no? Since each one is now in the ground, covered up by the dirt, even though right, it it, it was like that already, right? The hell, I karka now covered it up, and it looks like he sold him. You know, like we said before, if you sold him one tree and didn't have branches, and the branches come out of the out of the trunk, he can cut them down. He can't maintain them because he might cheat. But over here, I think he sold them already when, he, when the seller sold to him. He already had those branches. Now the ground covered it up. Do you look at the near It looks like near when he sold it to him. It looks like three trees. Do you look at the goof of the tree? It's one tree, and he's not entitled to karka, right? Or do you say, since it's already like in the ground and it's covered up, the ground covered up those branches, so it looks like three trees, even though that underneath it's really one tree, but it looks like three trees. That's, his, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the question here. Um, okay, so 
that's the question. Is that is it so is he entitled to cock or not? Yeah. Right, right, but it, but it looks like the question is, see, if if it happened after the fact, he sold them one tree. We said, and then branches came out of there. The buyer is entitled to the branch, but he has to cut them down because he might cheat and then say lepers. But over here, the seller sold it to him in that state already. When he sold it to him, it was one tree with branches sticking out, covered up by dirt. So if you just looked at it, it looked like three trees. Is he entitled to the carca or not? Is he entitled to the carca between them? He sold them something that looked like three trees. Four amas away, it's a big tree. Big tree, each one was four. The branches stuck out four and 12 amas. You ever see big trees? They can have trees that big. Very good. What's four amas? Eight feet, big deal. Do you ever see these old trees? These kind of trees that have branches, they could be like that. So that's the question. What do you say, Mao? Omerle, Rabbi Bexil, again, Rabbi Bexil answered the question of Ashi Toshma. The tonight we're going to bring a proof, the next mission in climb. Now, what's the case here? If you have three um, three vines, three vines does not constitute a vineyard. A vineyard is five vines. So the only way, let's say the way he wanted to do it is, here's the diagram. He had three vines over here. I don't know if you can see this, three vines. And what he did was he bent them over. He bent over part of each of three, bent them into the ground. And then they came out of the ground later on. Right, so now he looks like he has six vines. Six vines constitutes already a vineyard. You need five. The only way to get, if you had two, you could only make four out of it, right? But he had three, and he made three more out of it, and it's six. So it says over there, whether he cuts it or not, he doesn't have to cut the connection. Yeah, means they took root. They took root there. They took root, right? If it's between four and eight, in the case of the in the case of the vineyard, here we're talking about four to eight for a vineyard, not for acquiring the garlic. the In other words, do you have enough to constitute a vineyard? In which case, there's more strict rules about how close you can plant the grain or not. If it's only three individual ones, then it's less strict. It's only be six pachim away. So that's the question. So he says over here, if you bent it, mavrach means you bent it over like a barrel, like a knee. You bent it over, and it grew out over there. So it says if there's, if when they came out, when they stuck out over here, it's between four and eight. Then it constitutes a vineyard. The same thing over here. Same thing we want to say over here. That if you, uh, if it's between four and eight, it does constitute a separate tree, and therefore it's considered like even over here. It's really three vines, but you stuck them in the ground, that you bent them into the ground, they came out over there, it's considered like six. So the same thing over here, if you bent over, when he sold it to him, he had, uh, he had the branches had stuck out and they're covered up with ground and it's considered like a separate, uh, separate, uh, uh, it's considered like a, a separate tree and they add up. Rajbam says in the last line, Rajbam three lines from the bottom of the page in the Rajbam, in the case of the vines, they add up. Each two is really from one root. So in both these cases, we've answered that it is considered, um, it's considered, we said in terms of the first question, where do you measure from? You measure from the middle, not the not the bottom of the trunk where it's wider, not from the top where it's narrow, but you measure from the middle based on the mission and climb. And then we said, in this case, if you sold him one tree, which already looked like three, because already had branches sticking out and the covered and covered up, and they were at least four amas away, four amas away, it's considered like three trees, and that's what we see over here from this mission in in uh, in Klein. Okay, boy, wrap up another question. And these are all questions related to what? What's the basic idea? You bought three trees. What do you cut? So what's the distance between them? We said four to sixteen. It's got to be a minimum of four, maximum of sixteen amas away. Okay, uh, where do you measure from? You measure from the middle. Okay, what happens if he sold them already what looked like three trees, even though it was basically one? Okay, even though it was basically one, but it looks like three, that's good enough. Okay, he gets the cargo. What happens, Machalo, What happens if he sold them two trees in his in the in the seller's own property and one on the border? It's on the border between his property and another one. He owns that tree, but he sold them three. Is that considered? Is that considered like he sold them three trees and he gets the cargo out? And if you say over there, if you say over there that he that he acquires them, what happens if the owner, the guy who's selling him, has two trees in the owner's own property? Let's sell that Reuben. Reuben's selling it to Shimon. And he has another tree 
in Yanko's property, his neighbor next door. He has another tree there with some karka, but he didn't sell, uh, not, all three trees are not in, in his own property. Two are in his property, his property. One's in Yanko's property, although he owns the tree there with the land underneath it. What do you say there? Uh, again, so boy, Rabbi Machlo, Shnam Sachdeh Bech, and one on the border mount. Shnai Mitoch Shalo, Bech, and Mitoch Shavero. What happens if one's in Yanko's property mount? Take it. Not clear if he gets the karka with that or not. Boy, Rabbi Ashi, on Ahmed Beis now. Bor Maoshitopsik. What happens if between the three trees that you bought, there's a bore of water over there? Is that considered a hefsik or not? Is that separating between them, and therefore the three trees do not constitute a field? Or let's say you say that doesn't really mafria because a boar is uh, not a big deal. You don't see it from far away. MSMI, Macho, what happens if it's not just a boar, but there's a channel of water that runs through between the three trees? Does that separate the three trees so it's not considered one field and you don't get it? Or Rosh uh, Hashanah, what happens if there's a shrub running between them? Now, you might say, how could a Rosh Hashanah run between them? Rosh Hashanah itself is usually 16 amas wide. So if it's 16 amas wide, obviously, the trees are more than 16 hours from one another. So Tosa says right away, we're not talking about where it's where the Rusharam is 16 hours normally. Even though even though some Rusharam is that big, here it's a little bit smaller. The the uh, Bach points us to the Gemara on Kufdalar of days uh, that we're going to have in a couple of a few weeks, and there it says over there Derech Harab. Not there. Derech Harab isn't as wide as Rusharam. But anyway, but there's there's a public path that runs through there. What do you say there? Or what happens if you have a row of, of trees between them? Would that separate them? Like one row of palms that run between the three trees that you bought. That's considered like a separate, that separates the three trees and you wouldn't get it. All these questions stand taken. What happens if after you bought the three trees and you acquired the karka, a cedar tree grew up between those three trees? So um, uh, it says, Allah, if it, if it grew up afterwards, if it grow, grew afterwards, it's just a day nothing. I bought the three trees, right? I own the karka between them. Now another tree uh, shot up between them, right? Another tree grew up between them. It's mine. It's my karka. Of course it's mine. El Ahoyer has been aimed out. The question was, let's say there was already a cedar tree there. I bought three other trees, but there was a cedar tree between them. Does that separate them? Because an heiress is a big tree. Um, like kind of, a kind of, of course you acquired. No different, as we said before. We said before, if you bought three trees and they are a distance of between four and 16 from one another, you acquire the trees, you acquire the land between them, and you acquire any other trees that are there. It says, Ailanos, you, 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 uh, you, are, you acquire them. That's Ailana Shabanan. This is Ailana Shabanan. You don't, you don't measure from there. You, you measure from the three trees. It doesn't count at all. No, that's just stuff that's in your, you acquired some land and whatever's on the land. That's it. Other trees on the land, shrubs, trees, whatever, you get it all. Now, Kate said, hey, no, them. how are these three trees standing? In what formation are they? You say you bought three trees. What are they? Are they in a straight line? How are they? Kate said, any of them, Rav Amar Kashur, in a row, in a row. Now, when they're in a row, it's easier. Think about it. They're in a row, three in a row. And there's between four and 16 amas between the three of them, right? Between each, between one and two, and let's say trees number one, two, and three. But if they're in a row, it's very easy to plant between them. You can run a plow between them because, you know, there's nothing my free of. You know, it's like a tripod, meaning a triangle. They're one, two, three, and it's in a triangle. When they're in a triangle, it's harder to plant there because, you know, they, they, it's not a, you know, the straight way. You can try to go between here, you run into one. You try to go between there, you run into the other one. I'm not sure the one who says that they're you acquire them even if they're in a row, certainly if they're in the air like a triangle. The one who says that they're in a triangle formation, but if they're straight, well, no, you wouldn't acquire my timer. Mishum, the Mizdara bin I, because easy to plant. In other words, the idea is when you sell three trees, like the three trees are considered like their own field. You know, the seller really can't do anything with it anyway. They're like three as a separate field, so you acquire it. But if you hold that it has to be only in the form of a triangle, but if the three trees are in a row, you don't get the line between them. I meant to sell you three trees. I can still plow and, and plant my uh, my strawberries or whatever I want to plant between those trees, and therefore I don't sell you the cock. Again, the idea is what is in the mind of the seller, right? In all these cases, if he says, I'm selling you six trees, but I'm not giving you any land in between them, so you didn't sell them any land, right? That was the idea. It's not like a loch in the Torah, that, oh, if you sell three trees, you have to get the karka with them. We're talking about some. You sell them three trees. The assumption is you get the, three, the karka between them too. 
he said specifically, I'm not giving you the karka. Or if you sell them one tree and I'm selling you, selling you the tree and I'm giving you a, a whole acre around the tree also. Obviously, that was a deal. All these cases we're talking about stop. Maskar of Amnuna, the Laman Khatsuba, the one who says it's like a tripod, my time, uh, what's his reasoning? Why you get the karka? My time is the Lomazar, the Lomazar Minayu, because you don't you can't plant anything between them. Let's say he didn't sell them three trees. He sold them three Ro Roman thorns, sh shrubs, which are thorny, right? So also the Lomas you can't plant between them either because you're gonna get all you're gonna get all scratched up. So you can also say you get the karka, the Yeshla Karka, you get the karka there too. We said it in some case, if you sell them three trees, that's considered, and they are in the form of a tripod, you know, a triangle, then uh, you get the karka with the two. That's the assumption. Why? Because you can't plant anything between them anyway. So if let's say I sold them three shrubs or three three thorny shrubs, would I also get anything? He says, no, I'm like, Hanach lo chashivi, Hanach chashivi. Uh, three, shr th three shrubs are not considered significant. These are significant. Trees are significant. So there's a difference. They have to be three, but they also have to be significant. And therefore, he reminds us, by non tartivinian Rashbam says, Cheshiv is the lotus, but who loves us? It's got to be something significant and that you can't plant in between them. And that seems to be the halacha. But this that you get, the um, this, that you, this that you acquire, the uh, land in between them is when you have three trees, and the trees are significant, and they're in the form of a triangle. Okay, says the Mishnah. Hamocha rosh behema. Now, these are also norms. Again, you could also say different if you, you make different stipulations. Hamocha rosh, let's say I sell a rosh behema gasa, a large animal, like a cow, right, or a horse, whatever. I sell you the, the head. I'm selling you the head. They shafted the cow. I'm selling you the head. The feet don't go along with it. Because each one, when it's, it's a large animal, each one is significant into itself. I sold you the head, I didn't sell you the feet in a stomp case. Machs like a similar reverse. If I sold you the feet, I didn't sell you the head. If I sold you the lungs, Kana really means the windpipe, right? The windpipe, like the trachea, but he's referring, Rashbam says he's referring to the to the lungs, because that uh, that leads into the lungs, right? That's considered like part of the lungs. That's the uh, the breathing area, right? Doctor. It's the bronchial system. Right, that's right. That's what we're looking for. Okay, right. We have a pulmonologist here, so we can do uh, that. Uh, it's a pulmon. Right. So it, that's that's the that's the idea here. Okay. So if he sold them, if it's a large animal, if he sold them the the bronchial system. Loma, he didn't sell them the liver. Separate things. Machas akavit. Loma, the reverse is also. If he sold them the liver, he didn't sell them the kana. However, but a small animal, small animals have uh, what's called less significance, or let's say the smaller item is more connected to the bigger item. So he says, Baal, but if it's a small animal, say a goat or a sheep, machas arosh, if you sold them the head, machas the feet go along with it. Machas arosh, if you sold them the feet, the head doesn't go along with it. The head doesn't go along with it. Machas akana, if you sold them the bronchial system, what's called, you know, if you sold them the lungs, machas akana. The, the liver is considered secondary to the lungs. Then the, the, the liver goes along with the lungs. But they sold the liver, those are the norms there. You can change norms depending on locale, depending on you know what, whatever the minig is. But that was the standard minig there in Babel. If you sold them the liver, the lungs, the bronchial system didn't go along with that. Okay, next Mishnah says, Arba Midas Mokram. There are four rules, laws that, have come, that apply to selling. And here we get back to Bamatsia, the concept of fraud, of cheating somebody in a deal. Let's say the agreement was, I'm going to sell you good wheat, fine wheat. And it turned out that it was inferior wheat. So who got cheated over here? The, the buyer, the lokeach. Only the buyer can go back on the deal. The seller cannot go back on the deal. Now you say, why would the seller want to go back on the deal? Maybe because the prices of all wheat went up, right? When we go back, they can't go back on the deal, okay? Because that's like, you know, you sold them the wrong thing. That's cheating, okay? Rose finim siyafos. That's the first rule, that if the buyer got cheated because he sold them something more inferior than they agreed on, the buyer can go back on the deal, not the seller. Let's say the seller got cheated. They agreed to give him inferior wheat. And by mistake, the, the worker gave him the good wheat. Rose finim siyafos. The mocha can go back on the deal and not the, not the, uh, not the buyer. He can go back on the deal. He says a mistake. Rose from Rose, he opens him to Rose. Let's say he sold them exactly what he wanted to sell them. The deal was I'm going to give you inferior wheat. You got a good price over here. 
and he got the inferior wheat. Now one of them wants to go back on the deal. Why would they want to go back on the deal? Because the price changed, right? If the price went down, the buyer wants to go back on the deal. If the price went up, the seller wants to go back on the deal. Ne no, neither one. Neither one can go back on the deal. And Rajvam points out halfway down on the page, what did Mocher stum? If he saw him stum, Shlopi or Shalobro, as far as he didn't say it's good or it's bad, nobody can go back on the deal. I sold you this. Let the buyer beware. You got it. And that's it. You can't go back on the deal. Okay. Nobody can go back on it. Let's say he sold them. I'm selling you like reddish white. Shachmas is here is like the like the chama, like reddish, dark reddish uh, grain, and it turns out it was white. Or levanavim to shachmas. Now some people want white, some people want red. One's not necessarily inferior to the other. So, um, but but he told them I'm going to sell you red, and he sold them white. Or he told them he's going to sell them white, and he sold them red. Or ate some shazais. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to sell you olive wood. But him to shikman talking sold him sycamore wood or shikman shazais. He told them I'm going to sell you sycamore wood, and it turned out it was olive wood. Or yeah, and I'm going to sell you wine. But him to it turned out it was vinegar or or, uh, or inferior wine. Or he wanted he wanted to buy vinegar. I don't want wine. <coughs> I need vinegar for cooking. He bought he bought some vinegar. I shnei miachalach. But they can go back on the deal. They can both go back on the deal because it was a mistake. <laughs> the whole thing was a mistake. Either one go back. I, I thought I was selling you this. Oh, I by mistake, you picked up the wrong, wrong item. So both can go back on the deal. Okay. So we're talking over here when people got cheated, fraud. Now, Rav Hista brings down the famous rule. What's the rule of fraud when it comes to money? When it comes to value? So the rule is a fraud. A shouldn't cheat. So the rules that we Paskin like, not what Rav Hista talks about here, we Paskin like, if you got cheated by up to a sixth of the Suggested retail price. We're not talking about profit over here now. Profit was a different aloha that the rabbi said later on that when it comes to staples like fruits and like vegetables, uh, you couldn't shouldn't earn more than a third profit. That's talking about profit. Here we're talking about the regular market price, what we call we used to call manufacturer suggested retail price. The right mark, whatever the price is, whatever the price is. If you got cheated by up to a sixth, whoever got cheated, the seller or the buyer, mocho that people are mocho. No, everybody knows. You, know, you go to four stores to buy a bag of potato chips. They all charge a different price. That's a, within a certain within a certain uh, uh, you know uh, um, uh, band or range. Uh, you know uh, that's standard up to a six. If it's a six, the deal holds. A six, we'll see a six of the money or a six of the value of the item. The deal holds, but you got to give the six back. That's the psa. It's not what Chris is going to say. If it's more than a six, the whole deal goes off. If he wants to go back, the deal the whole deal is is invalid. And it goes back. Amrav Chisda, Machalo, Shava Chamesh Bishesh. Let's say he sold him something worth five for six. Now, right for six, meaning he was cheated by a sixth of the money. If the total money amount, he was cheated by one sixth of the money. Machalo Chamesh Bishesh too much. Now, what happened was first the buyer got cheated because he sold him something worth five for six. So the buyer got cheated. Then while the buyer if I didn't know the price, otherwise he wouldn't have cheated. He's entitled, let's say, for he has entitled to, let's say, half a day to go show it to an expert or show it to his family. During that time, the price went up to eight. Now who's cheated? The seller. The seller feels he got cheated. He first cheated the first cheated the buyer, right? Now he feels cheated because he says, now I can get eight for it. Minasan, who was originally cheated? The Lokeach. Kechach Lasbo. Only Kech go back on a blow moke. He can't get, not the moker. Why? You should now. Rav is going with the idea that even if you're cheated by a six, you can go back on the deal. That's not our psak, Rosh Bam said. The psak is if you're cheated by a six, the deal holds, but you got to get back the difference. You got to get back the six. But Rav Chisa goes with the shita that even if you got cheated by a six, the whole deal is off. If the lokech wants to, so the only lokech. Now the mochik can also during that period, during that window, he has a, let's say a six-hour window to show it to somebody, right? Like during that window, the price went up. So now the mochik feels he got cheated. But who was originally cheated? The mocher cheated the lokeach. Only the lokeach can go back. If low mocher, you should the lay because the lokeach can say, listen, evil law, and he said, had you not cheated me, Lavi must have satisfied. You couldn't go back on the deal. Let's say you had not cheated me, then the deal would have been final right then. You can't claim afterwards the price went up, the market went up. Hashtadon, he said, now that you cheated me, now you're going to be able to go back on the deal? No way, buddy. All right, Hashtadon, he said, must have satisfied. Now you can go back. The Tanatun, we see a right from our Mishnah also. That's our Mishnah. If the if the uh, buyer got cheated, Yafos, he sold him, told him he's going to buy good wheat, and he gave him bad wheat. Okay, see, it's my mission too. Bomber of Kiss, said in the reverse case, let's say he sold him 
something worth six for five. Now he got cheated by a six of the value of six of the value. You might, right, you can argue about the of holds whether it's a six of the value or a six of the money. However, it works out. Machalo Sheish, Mashav, it's worth six for five. So one six of the value he cheated. Cheat. Who got cheated now? The seller. By mistake, he sold to him for less money. Now it's only worth three. Now the Lokech said, now Lokech feels cheated. First, the Mokra got cheated. Now it went down to three. Lokech says, yeah, I, I don't want the deal. I, I could buy it now for three. Minasan, who was originally cheated, Mokra, the Mokra got cheated. Mokra got cheated. Mokra got Only the seller can go back on it. Why? Now you, you want to go back in the deal and buy it now for three next door? Right? Domele, he said, Eli said, had, had, had you not cheated me, you, put, you paid five for something that was worth six. Had you not cheated me, love Masrama, well, you can't go back on it. Now that you got cheated, you think you're now that now that you cheated me, you think you're gonna be able to go back on the deal. The ton of them we see also from our Mishnah, Rolos Finim Sayafos. Again, he sold them bad ones and he gave them good ones. The Mokra got cheated. Says more Mike Mash wants to question that. Masnisin, so what's Rafista teaching me? If you're saying the proof of mission of mission see the same thing, what do you need Rafista for? If you only learn the mission, you might say in Rafkista's case where they both got cheated. First the Lokef got cheated, then the Mok got cheated. Or first the Mok got cheated, then the Lokef. Maybe they can go back on the deal. Maybe uh, Matsu Hadriba. Tabayo maybe they go back on the deal. What about our Mishnah? What do you see my Mishnah? Our Mishnah, the gear says he has a different gear than the Bach and, and the Rajbam also. We must least not have me in a deal with Rafkista, Tabayo Matsu Hadriba. We must least not have me in a deal Pasuk says in Mishlei, Mishum the Masnis Nach Tam Noaid Mishum the Chsiv Ra Ra Amra Yom Rakona. The Kona always says, "Oh, this is bad stuff." You know when they're arguing about the price. It's a Mish. It's a pasuk in Mishlei. There, the explanation is, is that a person who's learning Torah um, through poverty is complaining, complaining, even though later on he'll be very happy. But the simple chat ch- ch- is the Kona. The buyer always says, "I'm buying something bad." I'm bad. So there, you might say the Mishnah says that. That's why. If he got cheated, if the really the buyer got cheated because he told him good and he sold him bad, buyer got cheated. If the seller now wants to go back on it because the price goes bad, no, 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 no. It's only the buyer who may has that claim, not the seller. The sellers, the seller said, You told me you told me you're selling me good stuff. How can you complain now about the price on good stuff? So the Mishnah, you wouldn't understand Rav Kista's rule. From Rafkista, you wouldn't see that. The Mishnah's talked about where you sold him the different item, not simply a difference in price, but a different item. So there. There, it's the mission is only talking about a case where it was a different item, a better or a worse. So there you can argue, you wouldn't know Rav Kista's case. You'd say in Rav Kista's case where they both eventually got cheated. Maybe they can go back on the Al-Kamash from Rav Kista's halacha, even though Rav Kista is not the halacha in terms of going back on the deal. Rav Kista's case where you were cheated by a sixth of the value or sixth of the money, you really, you get back the six, but you don't, the deal's not off. Rav Kista says the whole deal is off, but his idea is, is, is right that, if the first person got cheated, he can go back on the deal, not the other person who got cheated effectively later on. All right, we'll pick him here tomorrow, Mr. Shah. Yeah. Yeah. All things happen. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Go ahead. Have a good day. Call to you.